الفرقان ان الذين كفروا بايات الله لهم عذاب شديد والله عزيز ذو انتقام ان الله لا يخفى عليه شيء في الارض ولا في السماء هو الذي يصوركم في الارحام كيف يشاء لا اله الا هو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم ارحمنا بالقران العظيم واجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته وانا الليل وانا النهار واجعله لنا حجه يا رب العالمين امين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. With the name of Allah and hoping and invoking His help in every respect, tonight we are starting the third surah of the Quran, that is Surah Wa Ali Imran. As I told you in the introductory lecture, most of the surahs of the Quran are in the form of pairs. This is the rule with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has created everything in pairs. وَمِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَا زَوْجَيْنِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ Everything we have created in pairs. We find in the Quran also, although we don't think it is something created, but this rule you know, is so firm. that even in Quran we find that the surahs are in pairs. The Prophet ﷺ has given one name to these two surahs. Az-Zahra when Az-Zahra the most shining. So these are the two most shining surahs of the Quran according to that hadith. Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran. And you find that the Quran ends with Al-Mu'awwazatayn, the two surahs, which teach us ta'avvus, how to take refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq, qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. Subject matter is the same, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divided it into two, so that there is a pair. Mu'awwazatayn, two surahs, which are teaching us ta'avvus, how to do ta'avvus. You will find that just as in Surah Al-Baqarah in the first section, There are some fundamental rules about Quran. Who can really benefit from Quran? Huda lil muttaqin, al-ladina yuminuna bil ghayb, wa yuqimuna salah, wa mimma radaqnahum bil fiqun, ila al-akhir. In the same way you will find in the first section of Surah Al-Ala Imran, a very basic discussion about the understanding of Quran. In the same way, Surah Al-Baqarah as we read last night, it ended with a very big dua. prayer in the same way you will find that this surah al mubarakah will also end we have just you know recited the imam 
in the second rakah of surah of salat ul isha that prayer a very long prayer which comes in the last section of surah al imran then again like surah al baqarah it is also divisible into two parts and here the parts are nearly equal absolutely equal i should say because the surah consists of 200 ayat divided into two sections 20 sections 20 rukus so on the average every ruku contains 10 ayat the first part of the surah consists of 101 ayat and the second part of the surah consists of 99 ayat 10 rukus in the first part 10 rukus in the second part again just like surah al baqarah the first part is divisible into three sections and in the middle section as there was the direct address to yahud to the jews to bani israel ya bani israel askuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa anni faddaltukum 'alal 'alamin in the same way you will find in surah al imran the address is to the other group of the people of the book and they are the christians so hazrat masih alayhi salatu was salam his person his personality his life his mission his dawa it has been discussed in that middle section of the first first half of the surah so there are many other points of similarity between these two surahs but we shall inshallah see as we go through them otherwise we will take much time in this introductory lecture so now we begin alif lam mim again a point of similarity Surah Al-Baqarah also started with Alif Lam Mim, and this Surah Mubarak is also starting with Alif Lam Mim. I told you there are six surahs of the Quran in total, which begin with these letters, Alif Lam Mim. Two are here in the beginning, and they are these are the Madani surahs. Four are you will find them later in the twenty-first section, in the twenty-first part of the Quran. That is Surah Al-Ankabut, Surah Al-Rum, Surah Al-Sajda, Surah Al-Luqman. therefore they are makki surahs and they also start with alif lam mim alif lam mim allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum these words exactly these words we have read in ayatul kursi allah is he that there is no god except him and he is al hayy he is living he is his life is his own not given by anybody else ever living al qayyum and he is sustaining and maintaining the whole of existence himself he is self sufficient but the rest of the existence needs his support and sustenance to exist al hayyul qayyum nazzal alayka al kitab bil haqq he has sent down this book o oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with truth and bil haqq means that different places differently with truth and with a true purpose it has been sent down with a purpose not without a purpose musaddiqan lima baina yadayh and it has come confirming those scriptures which are present before it quran confirms torah that this was given by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to moses alayhi salatu was salam quran confirms in jeel that it was given to hazrat masih alayhi salatu was salam by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one the torah of al-inji and he himself had sent down torah and inji min qabl before this quran hudal linnas those two books as well as this book they have been sent for guidance for humanity hudal linnas wa anzal al-furqan and he has sent down the criterion with which you can differentiate between evil and good you can differentiate between false and real you can differentiate between what is correct and what is wrong inna alladhina kafaru bi ayati llahi lahum azabun shadid whosoever denies and denies the ayat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them there is a very painful torment a punishment which is very painful wallahu azizun dhu intiqam Allah is all mighty all powerful he has all the authority and he is who takes revenge also dun tiqam 
ان الله لا يخفى عليه شيء في الارض ولا في السماء verily nothing is hidden from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala either it is in the earth or it is in the skies huwa alladhi yusawwirukum fil arham kayfa yasha it is he who fashions you in the wombs of your mothers as he likes he has made everybody and actually this is his choice how he has made you. how he has made you to look none no human being has his own choice it is he who fashions you and as he likes this is discretion huwa alladhi yusawwirukum fil arham kayfa yasha la ilaha illahu again the same thing because this is the central theme of the quran tawhid there's no god except him none to be worshiped except him none to be obeyed independent of him you can obey others but under the obedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not independent of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's obedience who was azizul hakim again al aziz al aziz is the person who has the total authority without any checks and balances he can do whatever he likes he is al aziz so he has the authority al hakim but this authority is with wisdom on the one hand he is all authorized all mighty all powerful on the other hand he is the wise his wisdom is also complete so that authority cannot be misused it is always used with wisdom now comes that very important discussion about the understanding of the quran who all the anzal alayka al kitab it is he who has sent down on you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this book min hu ayatun muhkamat kullu umm al kitab wa ukhra mutashabihat it consists of two types of ayat min hu ayatun muhkamat some of its ayat are fortified absolutely clear in its meaning and connotation kullu umm al kitab they are the foundation they are the basis of the law law actually rests on ayat e muhkamat which are fortified and absolutely self evident there can be no doubt about their meaning wa ukhru mutashabihat and the other type of ayat in the quran they are mutashabihat they are allegorical fa amma alladhina fi qulubi wa hiya allegorical Now there is a question we must understand, because you know all the phenomena of the unseen universe, we cannot understand them of the ghayb, unseen, because no human being has seen that world. Therefore, when Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gives the description of the unseen, about the angels, about the hereafter, about the paradise, the heavens, about the hell, now these things are unseen for man. Hence, you know, to describe those things, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has used examples, similes, allegories, and now these things, you know, they can be interpreted definitely in different ways. Uh, actually, this is the difference between muhkamat and mutashabihat. There can be difference of interpretation about mutashabihat because they are allegories, but about the muhkamat, there can be no difference of opinion. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ So those people in whose hearts there is some disease, their intentions are wrong. فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ They are always after those ayat who are allegorical. And they want to know ابْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَابْتِغَاءَ تَعْوِيلَةِ They want to create discord and they want to know the real meanings of those ayat. which is impossible for man man because that world is unseen for him he cannot exact exact connotation of these things cannot be understood by man these things will become clear to us after the death and after we go to the hereafter then things will be clear otherwise before this these mutashabih ayat we have to believe in them but we cannot understand the exact meanings of those ayat which are describing the life here after the unseen world what rasikhuna fil ilm 
Now that was the attitude of those who have some disease in their hearts. They are always after the mutashabihat. But rasikhun of ilm, on the other hand, those people who are well rooted in knowledge, who know the limitations of human intellect, this is the basis, you know. You must know what's our limitations. Everybody should know what is my limitation. Man should know what is the limitation of human intellect. It cannot reach everything and every place. It cannot comprehend everything. What rasikhuna filil, there is the saying in, in Persian language, malumam should tehit malum na should. In the end, you know, most of the learned people, they are forced to say that now I know that I know nothing. A person very low in knowledge, he thinks he is very knowledgeable. But as, as you know, the knowledge increases, then man understands that he knows very little. Malum should. Kehit malum should. Today I have understood and appreciated that, that I didn't know anything. I am standing there. The real problems of this universe are still unsolved. Does any scientist know the length and breadth of this universe? Despite, you know, all the telescopes and, you know, the big means that we have at our disposal. Nobody knows where it begins, where it ends. No physiologist says that he knows what is life. We don't know. Where is it attached to in the body? How does it slip away when man dies? We don't know even today what is sleep. How do we sleep? Where is the switch in the brain? Then when it is put off, a man goes to sleep. And when it is put on, a man gets up. Nobody knows. So fundamental questions are still the unsolved in the same way. Although the explosion of knowledge is so great that it has become impossible for a human being to know, to have all the knowledge of all the sciences. Impossible. Even then, the basic questions are still insoluble. They cannot be solved. So we must understand the limitations. That is why we found in Surah Al-Baqarah, The first condition, if you want to benefit from the guidance of this book is, that you must understand that the real realities, the final realities, they belong to another world that is unseen for us. And we cannot approach it with the limited means that we have at our disposal, our senses, our intellect. We, are, we can only approach things and, and try to get knowledge from these two things. And you know they are limited. So people who know the limitations of human knowledge, they say, This is their saying. They say, we believe in this Quran. In all of this Quran, Kullu min indrabbina, all of is, all of it is from our Lord. Wama yazakkaru illa ulul albaab. But you know, only people who are of deep understanding, they can reach this reminding and they can attain to this position. Otherwise, people who are small in knowledge, they think they are very knowledgeable. رَبَّنَا لَا تُذِرْ قُلُوبَنَا These people are رَاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ They go on praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala رَبَّنَا لَا تُذِرْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا O our Lord, don't let our hearts go astray after you have given it the guidance. After the guidance has dawned on us, we have understood what is guidance. Now, please don't let our hearts go astray. And grant for us the mercy from your own presence. In the Kantal Wahhab, definitely, surely, it is only you who bestows mercy. Here in the first section also we have three ayat in which one supplication, one prayer is contained. And in the last section also you will find three ayat consisting of that prayer which those brothers who were there with the Isha congregation they, they listened to those ayat in the second rakah Rabbana inna ka jami'un nafi le yawmi la rai bafi O our Lord we know it that you will gather the whole of humankind and humanity 
for a day about which there is no doubt la rahe bafi that day is to come there is no doubt about it inna allah la yukhlifu al-mi'ad we know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't go back on his promises he has promised that he will gather you he will reward his faithful bondsmen so he is not going to go back to break his promise ibn ladina kafaru lan tughni anhum amwalahum wala auladuhum min allah shay'a verily those who have taken to kufr to this belief to denying the quran and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam lan tughni anhum amwalahum wala auladuhum their progeny their children and likewise their wealth and their money will be of no avail to them when they will be questioned by allah subhanahu wa taala wa ulaika hum waqudun nar and they have to become the fuel of the fire of hell kadabi ala firaun just like the people of firaun wal ladina min qablihim and not only firaun the other nations before him before them people of hud people of saleh the nation of ad the nation of samud the people of lut alayhi salatu wassalam and so on the people of shaib alayhi salatu wassalam people of lut alayhi salatu wassalam now there is this is the example of the former people former nations to whom allah subhanahu wa taala sent messengers kadabi ali firaun wal ladina min qablihim kazzabu bi ayatina they also belied our signs and our ayat denied them they rejected them fa akhadhahum allah bi dhunubihim so allah sees them due to their sins and misdeeds wallahu shadid al iqab and allah is very severe in punishment qul lil ladina kafaru tell them o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the people who are rejecting you qul lil ladina kafaru tell them satughlabuna wa tuhsharuna ila jahannam you will also be defeated you will also be overpowered in this world you will be overpowered defeated tughlabun wa tuhsharuna ila jahannam and in the hereafter you will be taken and driven towards the fire of hell wa bis al bihad and it is a very bad resting place but kana lakum ayatun fi fi'atil taqata i should have told you that this surah was revealed after the battle of uhud that's the difference between surah al baqarah and surah al imran surah al baqarah was revealed before the battle of badr and surah al surah al imran was revealed most of it except certain parts which i will let you know afterwards the surah al imran was revealed after the battle of uhud so there is a difference of more than one year between the time of revelation of surah al baqara and surah al imran because the battle of badr was held in the month of ramadan in the second year after hijra and the battle of uhud was fought in the month of shawwal in the third year after hijra so one year plus one month that is the difference between the two two battles and now you add something before badr and after uhud so nearly one and a quarter years gap between the time of the revelation of surah al baqara and surah al imran and most of it you will find 60 ayat nearly one third of the surah it consists from ayah 121 to ayah number 180 this is a long commentary by allah subhanahu wa taala on the events of the battle of uhud but here you know an example is being given of the battle of badr qad kana lakum ayatun fi fiyat an taqata the same thing that is continuing which was being said to the kuffar who were rejecting muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam qad kana lakum ayatun fi fiyat an taqata for you there has been a sign in the two armies that who confronted each other here the word badr is not given but we know that that this example is of the battle of badr qad kana lakum ayatun fi fiyatin taqata the two hosts the two armies 
that faced each other in the field of battle. To fi'atun to qatilu fi sabilillah. One party, one army, one group was fighting for the cause of Allah. That is Muhammad Rasulullah wa Nazina Mahu. They were fighting for the cause of Allah. Wa ukhra kafiratun. The other group, the other party, the other army was of the kuffar, of the non believers. Yaraunahum mislayhim rayal ain. The Muslims were seeing that they are facing an army which is clearly double than their own number. Although the number was three, three times. But at least it was apparent that we have to, to combat with an army which is twice in, in number and strength than ourselves. Wallahu yuayyidu yasrihi man yasha. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps and supports with his help whomsoever he wants, whomsoever he pleases. That is, it's a sign with you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave his help to the Muslims and they could defeat an army which was more than double the number of theirs. They had more arms than the Muslims. But still Allah Ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to the Muslims. In Nafiz Aleka. In this, definitely. In Nafiz Aleka al-Ibratan li'ulil absar. There is a lesson for those who have eyes, who can see. Who can see for themselves. So this one event is sufficient to give them the guidance. And luring and attractive has been made for the people, the player from women and sons and the players of gold and silver well, khairil musawwama and well-bred horses, well, anam and cattle, well, hearths and the tillage and the farms. All these things, you know, they are very attractive. They allure people towards themselves. All human beings, you know, after these things. Hubbu shahabat ibn al-Nisa. The players from the women and the sons. And then, you know, the hoarding of wealth in the forms of gold and silver and then well-bred horses that was the you know very big precious thing in the olden days even today they are very costly but an arm and cattle were hearths and farms cultivations <laughs> all these things are articles of use for this world nothing else they have no other reality no, no permanence in them. This world and the life where we are passing that here in this world, which is fleeing and fleeting, all these things are only for this world. And it is only with Allah that it is the good goal to return. Whosoever has in his mind that he has to go to Allah, actually of value is those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has with him. Qul aw nabbiukum bi khairim min zalikum. Ask them, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, should I tell you what is much better than these things? You are all after these things. All your struggle, all your hard work is to get and gather more and more of these articles. And that's all. Should I tell you what is much better than all these things? Lil nazeenat taqwa in the rabbihim. For those who have taqwa, who are really God-fearing, who, who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for them will be jannatun tajri bin tahti al anhar the gardens underneath which there will be rivers flowing, khalidina fiha, they will be, live there forever, forever, wa'adwadun mutahharatun, and they will have spouses, very pure, and the highest thing would be the player of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their Lord, their creator, their sustainer, he will be pleased with them. And Allah is seeing his bondsmen. He is seeing what they are doing. Who are those bondsmen? 
الذين يقولون ربنا اننا امنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار who say o oh our lord we come to believe believe we believe in you we believe in your prophet in your messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we testify that there is no god except you and muhammad is your bondsman and messenger faghfir lana dhunubana so please forgive for us our shortcomings our sins waqina azab an-nar and save us on the day of judgment in the hereafter from the punishment of fire as-sabirina was-sadiqina wal-qanitina wal-munfiqina wal-mustaghfirina bil ashar and now are the that, that was the prayer and what are the, their qualities what are their attributes what are the salient features of their character as-sabirin people who have perseverance show patience as-sadiqin who are truthful in whatever say and even whatever they do they act on truth and they say truth wal qanitin and who are obedient wal munfiqin who expend and give away their wealth for the pleasure of allah wal mustaghfirin bil ashar and who ask for his forgiveness in the small hours of the morning at the dawn when people are sleeping you know they are they are standing or prostrating before their lord they before their lord and they are and asking for his for his forgiveness allahumma rabbana ja'alna minhum may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include us among these people shahid allah annahu la ilaha illa huwa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is himself witness he testifies that there is no god except him who can be, who can be a bigger witness than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself shahid allah allah himself is witness to it he testifies that there is no god except him wal malaikatu and all the angels testify ulul ilm and from among the human beings who have the real knowledge they also testify qaim bil qist he is the upholder of equity and justice he is controlling this universe this existence with just balance la ilaha illa huwa al aziz al hakim there is no god except him and he is al aziz again the same two attributes al aziz all powerful all mighty but all wise also his wisdom is also complete inna dinna inda allah al islam the only deen now let me tell you here in all the translations you will find the word for deen religion this is not the correct correct explanation but we don't find any word you know that can gives the real translation of the word deen religion has a very limited connotation religion consists of only three things some dogma some modes of worship some social customs that's all it has to do nothing with the politico socio economic system that's all important the most important thing you know for all human beings is the politico socio economic system whether it is based on justice fair play equality fraternity or whether it is based on repression or exploitation or discrimination so actually the more important thing is the system the politico socio economic system so deen actually consists of all these six things there is a dogma in deen also tawhid risala baad then modes of worship are also there then rites and rituals are also there the social customs are also there but it has a social system of its own it has a political system of its own it has an economic system of its own so it's an all comprehensive all embracing phenomenon but I don't find one word in English language which can give the connotation and express the full meaning of the word "deen." In the "deen," I in the Allah is Islam. Now the translation you will find everywhere: the only religion that is acknowledged by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is Islam. But you must keep the word "deen." Just as I told you in the very beginning, I cannot use any word in the place of "ayah." Ayah is ayah. 
we, we don't have any other word to replace for its translation. Surah is surah, it's not chapter. In the same way, deen is deen. We can't translate it. In the deen in the lahir Islam, the only deen acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, acknowledged by Him, is Islam. And to those people whom we give the book, we gave the book before. They didn't differ, but only after the real knowledge had come to them. We had sent them the Torah and we had given them the knowledge, but still they differed among themselves. The light was there. They were not in the darkness, but still, you know, they didn't avail of the light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided them. And what was the reason? Baghiyam bainahum. Out of jealousy among themselves. And this Baghiyam, you know actually, I translated it last night also. The earth to dominate. It's Adler's view that the very potent motive in, in human beings is the earth to dominate. Everybody wants to dominate others. And this is the reason and cause of the conflict. So they want to dominate each other. And due to this urge of domination and this jealousy among themselves, they have been differing with each other. And now that the clear signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have again been sent to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now whosoever among them, he denies these ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ صَرِيعُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ صَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very swift in reckoning. He will take no time. Fain hajjuka. And now if, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these people argue with you, they dispute with you, fakul, tell them, in unequivocal terms, aslam tu wajhiya lillahi wa mani tabani. I have surrendered myself, my whole personality to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only myself, but all those people who are following me. We have surrendered. We have submitted. And now ask those to whom the book was given before. The Jews, the Christians. And also those whom no book was given. The pagan Arabs. Of, of the Arabian Peninsula. Ask them both. Ask them to, Do you also surrender? Do you also agree to submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Fain aslamu. If they surrender, if they submit, faqadeh tadaw. They have, they have the guidance. Now they are guided. They are on the path of guidance. Fain tawallaw. And if they turn away, fain nama alayk al bala. Then your duty was only to convey to them. That's all. You are not responsible for bringing them to the right path. It's not in your power and it's not your responsibility. This burden has not been put on your shoulders. Neither its power has been given to you. Your duty is to convey the message. Once you have done it, you have done your job. Now it's up to them whether they want to accept and respond positively or they want to refuse. Wallahu basirun bil ibad. But whatever they do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeing who is turning away and whose heart had confirmed that this is correct. Allah knows. Just as we read in Surah Al Baqarah, Yarifunahu kama yarifun abnahu. These Jews, he have recognized Muhammad and this Quran just as they recognize their own sons. There's no doubt about him in their minds, but still they are not ready to accept. They are not ready to believe. Allah, Wallahu Basiru bin Ibad, Allah very well knows his bondsmen. In the Nadira Yakfuruna bi ayatillah wa yakuluna nabiyina bi gari haqqin. Now these all issues have been discussed, you know, in Quran, in Surah Al Baqarah. Already we have read them. Verily don't know, verily those people, in the Nadira Yakfuruna bi ayatillah, who deny and belay. The ayat of Allah, the signs of Allah, and who have been killing and murdering the prophets of Allah, without any reason. And they have been killing and murdering those people who wanted to enjoy and join upon them whatever is good. From among the people, 
O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you give them the glad tidings of a very severe punishment, of a very painful torment. Ulaika alladheena habita ta'amaluhum fi dunya wal akhirah. They are the people whose deeds, whose actions have gone in vain. They have been futile in this world also and in the hereafter also. Because although they were, you know, they didn't accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but they were Jews, they were practicing Jews, they thought that we are on the right path, they used to pray, they used to act on the Sharia of uh, Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. So they thought that we have a lot of good deals with us. When we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are not going there empty headed. We have much with, you, with us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O Muhammad tell them, all their good deeds have gone vain, futile, habit of amalu. Because if they have not accepted Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does it mean? It means they were not sincere. Had they been sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how could have they rejected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It proves that all their good deeds before also, they were baseless. They were not based on sincerity. And any good deed without sincerity is equal to zero in the scale of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It carries no weight. Didn't you see? Didn't you consider the matter of those people who were given a portion of the book? Actually, all these books go to make one book, Al-Kitab. Torah and Injil were the former editions of the same book. So they were given a portion of the book. Torah and Injil, so to say, were a portion of the book. Didn't you should see towards them to whom a portion of the book was given when they are invited to the book of Allah. So that it can judge between them. لَيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ يَتَوَلَّا فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ وَهُمْ وَرِضُونَ But a party of them, some of them, they turn their backs away and they are averse to it. They don't want to get their matters and affairs judged by the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as we people, Muslims, they did happen, you know, in the Indian subcontinent during the British Raj. The Britishers had given the option to the Muslims that if they like, their property would be distributed according to the Islamic law of inheritance, even through the courts of the Britishers. But the Muslims used to stand up in the court and say, we don't need Sharia. We know the rivaj, whatever is common with us, you know, what is our, our custom, we want our decision according to custom, we don't want Sharia at all. The same is the case here. Alam tarayla utu minal kitab. Didn't you see towards them who were given a portion of the book? When they are invited, towards the book of Allah, so that it should judge between them. A party, some of them, they turn their backs away and they are averse to it. Why this attitude? What's the reason of this attitude? This is because they think, they say, that the fire of hell, hell cannot touch us. Except for a few days. That was their forged belief which made them so bold. Because if, if they were, you know, so to, so to say, they were uh, free from the punishment of the hell, then why to have Sharia and why to act according to the Sharia? If you have the fear of the day of judgment, if you have to fear, if, if you have to the fear, of the lasting torment and punishment of Jahannam, then you will have to think twice before saying anything. But when they had concocted, they had invented, they had forged these beliefs, and whatever they had concocted, whatever they had invented, that has deceived them regarding their deen. What will happen to them? They should imagine. And they should imagine what will happen to them. When we shall gather them for that day about which there is no doubt. And every soul will be paid in full what it had earned. And they will not at all be wronged. Now it's again a very, a very big 
very important dua and prayer. Qul Allahumma say, pray. Allahumma malik al mulk. O oh Allah, the sovereign of the whole dominion, of the whole universe. Total mulk amantasha. You give the dominance to whom you will. Watanjol mulk amantasha. And you take away the governance from whom you, you like. Watanjol mulk you give, you give honor and you exalt anybody that you like. And you put to humiliation anyone whom you desire. All good is in your hand. You have the authority for everything. You give honor to whom you like. You give superiority in this world to whom you like. You give humiliation to whom you like. You, you give the government or superiority in some land to whom you like. Khair, all good is in your hands. In the Kala Kulishail Kareem, and you are all powerful. You have power over everything. You make the night enter into day. And you make the, the day enter into night. That is, you make the night longer so that the Day is becoming shorter. And the reverse of it. The day is become lo becoming longer so that the night is becoming shorter. It is as if night is entering the day and the day is entering the night. And you raise the living from the dead and the dead from the living. And you give and you provide to whom you to whom you like without any measure or account. La yatakhidil mu'minun al kafirin awliya min dooni al mu'minin. The believers shouldn't take friends, shouldn't make friends with kafirin, with kuffar, with the non-believers, in preference to the believers. Wa ma yafal zalik. Whosoever will do will take to this attitude, will adopt this attitude. He has no connection whatsoever with Allah. Except that you have to guard yourself against them as you have to guard. You know if you think that somebody can do you harm and you are polite with him only due to save yourself from his harm is something else. But to have real love, real friendship with the non-Muslims it doesn't, be, it doesn't behove of a Muslim. It doesn't become of a Muslim. Muslims should have Muslims as their friends. Muslims should try to make friends among the Muslims. لا يتخذ المؤمنون الكافرين أو الياء من دون المؤمنين ومن يفعل ذلك فلست من الله في شيء Then he will have nothing to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatsoever. إلا أن تتقوا منهم تقاء Except that if you have to, to be polite with them only to save yourself from their harm and Allah is warning you to beware of him, to beware of Allah's, Allah's punishment. And towards Allah is going to be your return. Now this is the same subject which was in the last section of Surah Al-Baqarah. Whether you hide or conceal whatever is in your in your chests and hearts or to do or whether you announce it. Ya Allah, Allah knows it. Allah's knowledge doesn't depend on what you are saying. Allah knows what is there in your hearts. And He knows whatever is in the in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. And Allah is powerful on everything. The day that is the day of judgment. When every soul will be confronted with whatever it had done. It will be present before it. It will find before it whatever it had done. Whatever good it had done, it will find before it. 
whatever bad it had earned, whatever evil, evil it had earned, it will find before it. Every soul with very much long, that there would have been very long distance between him and the and the bad deeds. But you have again the same words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning you to beware of him. And Allah is very kind with the people. Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni A very important ayah. Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you want to love Allah, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, if you really love Allah, fattabi'uni, then follow me. Yuhbibkum Allah, what will be the result? Allah will love you. Now these two words are different and please note them here. To obey Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is a difference between the two. Obedience is to a command. When he has expressly said do it and you are doing it, it is obeying. When he has expressly said don't do it and you are refraining from it, then you are obeying. But you know he has not said anything. But you find what he is doing and you try to copy him. That is following. It's at a higher level. He has not commanded you to do it. But you see him doing something and you are copying him. You are following him. Without any express command from him. This is ittiba. And that is ita. Obedience ita. Ita is essential for every Muslim. But ittiba is the higher level, spiritual level. It's a very high spiritual level. So you will find here in two ayat. First of all, ittiba and then the ita. Both things are discussed here. Tell them if you love Allah, then follow Allah. If you love Allah, then follow me. Allah. Tell them if you love Allah, so follow me. This is ittiba, the higher level. That is why the result is yuhibbukum Allah. You will become the beloved of Allah. You are loving Him. Now you are the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the result of ittiba. By yaqfir lakum zunubakum. And whatever be your mistakes and sins, He will forgive you. Wallahu ghafurur rahim. And Allah is forgiving and merciful. Qul ati'u Allah wa rasul. Now here is ita'ah. Tell them you have to obey anyhow. Allah as well as His Messenger. Fa'in tawallahu fa'in Allah la yuhibbu al-kafirin. And if they turn away, Allah doesn't like these kuffar. To refuse to obey Muhammad is kufr. So that is the basis. You have to obey him anyhow. Whether you like the order or command or not, you have to obey. This is the fundamental requirement of being a Muslim. But if you go higher, if you want to go higher up, then you see whatever he has been doing and you try to follow it. Follow in his example that this is the higher level and that is called it tabah. Inna Allah has tafa Adam wa Nuhan wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibran ala al-alamin. We shall translate this next ayat in the next session, but please, the few minutes that we have, let me give you the uh, introduction about these ayat now. I told you that the first half of this surah, Al Imran, can be divided into two, three portions. The first portion ends at the ayah number 32 that we have completed. Second section is starting from ayah number 33 and it will go to ayah number 64, 31, 32 ayat. Now these ayat were revealed in the ninth year after Hijrah, very far off. The rest of the whole surah was revealed in the third year after Hijrah. But these thirty or more ayat, they were revealed in the ninth year after Hijrah. When a deputation of the ulama, of the knowledgeable person, people who are very high in hierarchy, religious hierarchy, of the Christians of Najran, Najran was a Christian colony, in the, on the southern side of Hijaz, and there the Christians were living, and from there a deputation of their ulama and their high priests, they came to Muhammad sallallahu in the ninth year after Hijrah. And there was a dialogue, there was a the dialogue about the beliefs of Islam, and you know at that time these ayat were revealed, but they have been placed in this Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, high. To became, to, so that it should become similar to Surah Al-Baqarah. 
بکاز ان سورت البقرا دی ڈسکشن واز ود ود دی جیوز یا بنی اسرائیل اذکروا نعمت اللہ یدن تو علیکم واوفو بعہدی اوف بعہدکم و ایایا فرحبون ہیر دس از دی سیکنڈ انڈیویجول اف دی پیر دی پیر یو نو اف سورت البقرا سورت ال عمران and you know the other group of ahl e kitab is the christians so here in this surah al-mubaraka the discussion with regarding the christians and their beliefs that had been placed here although it was revealed much later than the rest of the surah ahl e imran so here you know we will find very good discussion about who jesus was what was his real position how he was very and actually then the parallel case of hazrat yahya alayhi salatu wassalam hazrat zakariya all these things we find also in the bakki quran in surah al maryam but here you know special occasion you know that demanded that these things should be in a fresh way they should be discussed when those people came for for discussion and dialogue and argument with muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so these ayat are revealed were revealed in the ninth year after hijra and we shall study them in the next session inshallah barakallahu li wa lakum fil quran al azim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikril hakim